and has never been uh, someone like Prince. Uh, he passed away in 2016, and for six years there's been a battle over his legacy. For the family, the fight is over, leaving two parties to split the late musician's estate. And joining me right now to discuss all of this is the manager of Prince Legacy LLC, attorney Londell McMillan. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning. This is obviously a long process. Is six years technically kind of short for an estate like Prince's? Well, if there was estate planning, it would have been shorter, but when there is no will and it has to go through probate, it's often much longer. You see many estates that last for 10 years and more, mm -hmm. um, but the six years was still a very long period and we would have liked it to be over sooner, but we're very grateful that we have a chance to take it over now. Now, tell me a little bit about how this works, because it, it isn't all going to the family, but it's being split between two parties. Correct. When Prince passed, uh, he, there were adjudicated heirs of six people. Uh, two have passed, but three of those, um, including one that passed away, uh, chose to sell their interests to another company, which is something that we regret because we know how hard Prince fought for his legacy and wanted to keep uh, his assets under creative and control. Yet, nonetheless, um, you've got two groups now. You've got one group with Prince OAT, and then you have our group, which is family and friends of Prince, his siblings, as well as myself and my partner, and we are going to manage his estates together. So what will the family be able to do now to keep Prince's legacy alive? Oh, we're going to do many, many exciting things that the estate was unable to do. We're going we're gonna to have very carefully crafted creative offerings for music, exhibitions, um, shows. We're going to get back out there, hopefully work on some things on Broadway, films. Uh, we're going to invest. We're going to invest in that purple legacy that uh, is going to be magical and special because he's not here, but he left directions on what he wanted to do. We're going to continue to make sure that Paisley Park is a first class exhibit and destination. We're going to do things like we're doing here in Chicago with the immersive experience, mm -hmm. which is a touring exhibit, which we recommend people to go. But we're going to basically put a lot of love into this purple brand and love for Prince. But it's not just about the cash, really, I mean, at all. It's, it's really about what his catalog of music can do for the heirs of the heirs. Or it's also for the fact that there are so many fans who want to know about music that was yet to be released, right? That's, that's very key because um, Prince was certainly a music icon and probably the greatest music of all time, music artist of all time. If you look at every category, mm -hmm. performing, dancing, songwriting, producing, no one was better than Prince. And he generated considerable wealth and assets, but it's not all about the cash. He stood for purpose as well. He, he meant something. So beyond just the music, we want to celebrate and push what he meant for and what he stood for mm -hmm. artistically, culturally, uh, artist rights. Uh, he was an advocate for many things that the estate just was not able to fully put out there. And we want the full representation of Prince to come to light. What are we talking here? I mean, what's most important to the family in terms of the value of his estate? Because, I mean, Paisley Park is probably one of the most famous landmarks in the Midwest. Yes. Um, and in the music world. Yes. Um, but there are other goals. Like you said, he left instructions. Yes, he did. Were they personal letters from the family? And the family was saying, we have to fight for what he wrote in this letter? Well, there were notes. Um, there were kind of memos. And there were discussions with various trusted people. Uh, when you ask what are some of the things that are most important, uh, obviously his music was most important to him. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he had released classic songs and albums, but he also had the unreleased vault material. And everyone who knows about Prince knows about this vault. And the vault is of hundreds of amazing songs. So we'll have to go through, digitize, make them appropriate for release, consult with our fans, family and friends, as well as our partners, and come up with a catalog plan that gets this music out, but also celebrate his legacy, not just as an artist, because although he was one of the greatest, if not the greatest artist, he also was someone who stood for something special and purposeful. And that's the special thing about him not just charitable but also culturally relevant in the community he embraced all people all colors but he also stood up for those who were less fortunate well and you knew him I mean you worked with him when he was alive and now you are still 
working with his family. Well, not only I knew him, when he had slave on his face, he came to me as his lawyer, and I started that way, and we got slave off of his face, got him to take his name back, and I worked with him for 13 years as his manager and partner. Yeah. So he's, he's a very special. He helped me build my career, uh, but for Prince, my career would never, never have catapulted to the level that it did, and I'm very grateful for him. And so, in, in part, uh, our legacy and our work continues. That's right. Londell McMillan, thank you very much for making time to stop by here on Morning in America. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.